In this lesson, I'm going to cover how to get a directory listing. Simply put, a list of all of the things that exist in your current directory or any directory you might choose. And this is really important because pretty much any task that you want to do in Python or any other programming language where you're working with files, you're going to have something in there where you want to look through all of the files in your current directory and do something with them. So this kind of pattern is something that's really important and you see it often when you work with files. So it's something important to cover. Here are some of the basic directory listing functions. And throughout this series, I'm going to often show you a couple of different ways of doing the tasks that I'm going to show you how to do. And often that will be a division between the OS module and the pathlib module. And there really won't be too much of a difference between how these work. It will be more of a question of whether you prefer a more traditional kind of bash style syntax for working with your file system, whether you prefer to work more with bare strings and things like that, or whether you prefer to work with a more object-oriented library. And in the minds of most people that I know, a more object-oriented framework like the Pathlib module is better Python practice, but if you're more comfortable with the OS module, then by all means use it. So I'll show you and I'll try to elaborate on the distinctions between these two. So with all that said, the first function here is os.listdir, which just takes in a directory name and then returns a list of all the files and subdirectories in that directory as a string. The slightly more sophisticated alternative is os.scandir, which returns an iterator instead of a list. And that iterator is not of strings, but rather of file objects that have some properties to them, which make them a little easier to work with when you actually want to treat them as files. And then the pathlib module has a very similar paradigm to scandir, except it works on a path object. And I'll show you how to initialize a path object and work with it over in the Python REPL in just a second. My sample directory for this lesson is relatively simple. It just has a couple of subdirectories and several files in it. And each subdirectory has a couple of different files too, just so that you can see the differences between the directory listing outputs for all of these directories. Okay, let's get into the code a little bit here. First thing to do is get some imports going, import OS, and then I'm also going to say from pathlib import path, just so I have all my imports up here in one place. So the first thing that you can do if you want to get a directory listing is you can just say os.listdir. And then as you can see from my handy REPL, it takes in an optional path parameter. And so if you don't pass in a path, it will just use the current directory. And as you can see, if you remember from my slide with the sample directory information, it has subdir, subdir b, and then three different files, all of different types. But as you can see here, all of these are just bare strings. So this is a string list. And so this isn't super flexible when you want to actually get information about this. So you can say something like maybe os.path.isFile, and then you could call that on a file or whatever. But you have to do all of this kind of circumlocution to figure out some information about this file. This isn't the case with something like scandir. So you can say something like for name in os.scandir, and then that will also take in an optional path parameter. You can say if name.isFile, and I'm not sure exactly why this has no underscore and this does have an underscore. I wish I could tell you more about why that is, but um, who knows? So that you can just get that attribute directly from the object, because as you can see, these objects are deer entries rather than just plain strings. So the deer entries have information within them, whereas the strings you have to use a little bit more, uh, you have to do a little bit more work as a programmer to learn the necessary commands to actually get this information about these things. So that's a, something to notice there is that os.scandir is a little bit more object oriented, whereas os.listdir works a little bit more like a traditional Linux file system where pretty much everything is a string and you just kind of have to do the work on your own to figure out the information about it. So pathlib takes a similar philosophy, except you have to create the path as an explicit object. So dear path equals path, and then I'll just pass in the current directory, dot slash, and then you can do exactly the same stuff as you can do with os.scandir. It's just that you call iterdir directly on the path. And then it's exactly the same thing here. If name.isFile, print name, 
And as you can see, this name has a little bit of a different printing function, but this name is still an object, which has a little bit more information than just a bare string. And so that's relatively useful. And all of these things you can use on any path that you like. It's not just on the current directory. So I could say list year dot slash sub -deer, and I could get the two Python files that are in the subdirectory. I could say for name in os.scandir subdir b, and I could do the same thing and just get the one file in subdir b. And then you could do the same thing with path as well. You'll just have to create a path object for that subdirectory or whatever other directory you want. So that's three different ways to get a directory listing with the OS module and the pathlet module. And they all have their advantages and disadvantages. OS.listier is really simple and easy. OS.scandier and pathlib.path have a little bit more nuance and you can do a little bit more things with them, but you don't necessarily have the same kind of ease that you do with OS.listier. So all things to consider. In the next lesson, I'm going to cover how to actually get attributes of these file objects.